I'm Emma. I'm Evie. And I'm Adam. With all the excitement building for season 35, the Tar Pit crew would like to bring you a series of exclusive interviews to meet some of the teams before the season premiere on September 27th. Here's our interview with New Yorkers Joe and Ian. Hope you enjoy. All right. Ready, girls? Okay. All righty. We're here with uh, Joe and Ian, one of the teams from season 35 coming up. And uh, I'm going to let you guys introduce yourselves if you could and just let us know a little bit about who you are and uh, uh, what we can expect from you guys. Yeah. My, my name's Ian. Um, born and raised in Ohio. Um, have spent the last seven years in New York City um, where I met Joe. We started dating shortly after I moved to New York and have been dating and most recently became engaged about, what, eight months ago, nine yep. months ago? Oh, nice. And I'm Joe. Um, I have been living in New York City for, I think, coming up on 11 years now. Um, I I work in tech. I work for a commercial real estate technology startup. Um, so my professional career in New York City has always kind of hovered around uh, commercial real estate and, you know, that intersection of commercial real estate and technology in the more recent years. Um, and then, yeah, Ian and I have been together for uh, over five years now. Um, and as he mentioned, most recently uh, got engaged. And that's and we were, uh, you know, engaged when we uh, competed on the race. Nice. Congratulations. Um, Thank you. Hey, it's Evie. Um, when did you guys decide to be a team and actually go on the amazing race also are you cat people or dog people (laughs) um well similar (laughs) similar to your family this is an amazing race household as well um before we met uh we were both super fans of the show um and it wasn't until um we were locked up in covid that we started to reignite our love for the amazing race. And we actually went back and watched every episode of the amazing race from season one, which was like a fun exercise as I'm sure you all can relate to um, during COVID and kind of being stuck inside. Um, So yeah, we were both super fans of the show. And so after COVID we were like, you know what, we're not getting any younger. Um, We love the show. We're fiercely competitive. So why not throw our, throw our hats in the ring and, and try to get on. Yeah, not only do Ian and I love the show fiercely, but you know, my my immediate family, they also love the show. And so there's always been little sprinkles here and there of like, hey, uh, you know, they did this challenge on the amazing race, thought it was super cool. You have to check it out. If like, you know, coming from my mom or something. And of course I checked it out. Um, and then in addition to that, you know, Ian and I are very much, you know, adventure travelers and we like to Um, fly to exotic places and get off the beaten path. And so our friends and family who are familiar with the show would always tell us that we'd be pretty good on it um, and said, you know, you guys should look into it. And one day we actually actioned upon it. (laughs) Yeah. And uh, Evie, we are dog people. Very much so. Same. (laughs) (laughs) This is Emma. And what are some of you, what are some of your most memorable challenges from past seasons? Ooh, I, I enjoyed, um, there was one season where they went to Amsterdam and one of the challenges and and you, you all might remember this. Um, I feel like it was a little iconic, but one of the challenges was, um, they had to get money by performing a dance in Amsterdam. Um, Ooh, and yeah. I, I, yeah, I remember James and James, like, we were like crushing the challenge and then a couple of other teams were like really struggling with like yeah. collecting money from from uh people in the town so is that when they were pouring the drink out of the giant thing because they did that too to get money they'd like sell the drinks this was like a musical oh, 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 oh. like a musical like trailer that they had to like perform at right mm-hmm. right right that was a good challenge yeah, yeah. <laughs> um Let's see, there, there's been so, so, so many. Um, one that sticks out in my head was actually, it was on the finale. So it was actually in the US and Alaska when they did the whole, honestly, the entire Alaska leg I thought was fascinating. They had to, you know, do like the ice canyon traversing and then they had oh, the, yeah. um, they were on the plane and they were dropping something to hit a target that was on the ground. And mm-hmm. um, oh. I, I was thought, that Derek and Claire's season? Yeah. Uh, 
Was it? Yeah. Yeah. And then they had to like snorkel or scuba dive at the very, very end, I think. <laughs> that whole that whole last leg like, is just very kind of adventure outdoors adventure Um, I loved it. Mm-hmm. Nice. So um, a lot of the teams bring different talents and skills that they have in their daily life to challenges. And um, I had said on a previous episode that um, the two military brothers, I think it was Marcus and what was Michael, Michael, that's right, um, that they were used to being stationed in Europe and were familiar with maps and and road signs in Europe. Uh, So they had a little bit of an easier time, I think, navigating some of the other teams. Are there any skills or talents that you guys uh, felt you brought to the challenges that helped you out i'll i'll actually speak for ian on this one um when, when i first met ian well, this should be interesting. Um, and we started dating um he introduced me into this wild world of flights and this the intricacies of you know connections and uh all the different airline alliances and partners and codes all these things, the whole world of that, right? And um, going into the race, uh, we were so excited that um, regular commercial flying was was coming back uh, to the show because we thought um, going into the race that that would be a pretty significant advantage for us, especially because Ian's familiarity with all the intricacies that go into flying and especially international flying. Yeah. Right? Knowing that we were going to find ourselves probably in um, some, you know, random travel agency in a random foreign city and being able to handle and navigate that scenario um, efficiently uh, and and being able to keep your cool during that, uh, I thought that was a pretty good advantage for us collectively. Yeah, I think like deciding between like connecting flights, like which which connection are we going to take? What city is it through? Like, does that city have delays typically? So I think there was a little bit of that knowledge that, that came into play when we were, when we were on the race, Mm -hmm. um, that was beneficial for us for sure. Nice. Um, it's Evie. What kind of things did you guys do to prepare for the race? Please tell me you learned how to drive a stick shift. (laughs) <laughs> well, I knew how to drive a stick shift, but one <laughs> of us did not. So, uh, On all of our previous international <laughs> trips, I had the luxury of sitting in the passenger seat, not having to worry about driving the car. Yeah. And I still <laughs> drive the car on international cities where appropriate. Joe did learn how to drive a stick um, in the event that for some reason I couldn't drive. He could grind his way to first, second, and third gear. Cut to me and Ian in the middle of Pennsylvania somewhere on our way to D.C. in, what, a Mini Cooper? Yeah, we rented. We went on Toro and we rented a Mini Cooper because it was the only thing in the greater New York area that had a stick shift. <laughs> um, and we drove from Philadelphia to, or sorry, drove from New York, New York to Philadelphia, Philadelphia. Yeah. Um, teaching Joe how to drive a stick and then also um we left our cell phones at home we left our laptops at home we took no electronics with us and we went on a scavenger hunt in philly with without the use of any electronics and we relied on people to help us navigate and also a physical map that we bought on amazon so um, (laughs) that's kind of how we prepared for the race i will say that getting on the race it was a bit bit different because when you're in thailand or when you're in korea or wherever the race puts you um isn't always English uh, readily available. So um, we prepared as best we could. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, you know, I got to the point, even though I was just doing circles around a random hotel parking lot, but I got to the point where I felt confident that I can get from point A to point B, wherever the race needed me to get to, um, in the event that I needed to. Uh, I learned it, though the plan was always that Ian would still operate the car on the race. <laughs> Nice. That sounds like a good plan. Um, what are some of the things or excuses that you used for friends and family uh, when you were told that you were going to be on the show, but you couldn't tell anybody what you were doing or why? Um, that's a good question. Uh, we <laughs> we kept it pretty tight lipped. We didn't even tell people we were leaving except for our like immediate family, um, which definitely helped that cause. Yeah, I will say it. It was probably easier for us compared to all the other teams because that's kind of the Joe and Ian MO is to sort of drop off the grid a little bit. I mean, you know, we've been 
even most recently we we're in um the azores in portugal and we the place we were staying was a, a very uncommon island in that island cluster and then an uncommon place on that uncommon island so we're always very remote off the beaten path so off the grid yeah off the grid so the fact that we were disappearing for you know a month wasn't the craziest thing to our you know immediate family and friends. yeah and our friend group yeah <laughs> um hey it's evie um will you guys come back on the show to talk about um season 35 after your last episode airs yeah definitely sure we would we would love to evie cool this is emma and how can fans keep up with you do you have any social media or any projects that you want them to know about yeah. yeah, we're both on Instagram. Yep. Um, That's probably the best way. We're pretty active on Instagram. Yep. Um, I don't even know my handle. I do. <laughs> of course. <laughs> so this is Joe. My handle is at Joe Mosk, J O E M O S K, little portion of my last name. Um, and Ian's is at Ian underscore A underscore Wanderer. There we go. <laughs> nice. Thanks, guys. So um, thanks for this, and we really appreciate your time. And you guys have a train to catch, right? We do. We do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was trying to, to make sure we weren't too long. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Sounds Thank good. You. Sounds Bye. good. Thanks for having us. Bye. Thank thanks. Have Absolutely. a good day. Bye. So, Evie, what did you think? I really liked meeting Joe and Ian. They seem really nice, and I love that they're dog people. Yeah, I bet our dog loved hearing that, too. Yeah. Um, I wish that they could spend more time with us, and after their last episode airs, then they can come back. Yeah, that would be nice. Hopefully they can, and they won't have to catch a train that time, and they'll be able to chat more with us. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Bye.